What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, October 4th. Before we jump in, don't forget part two of the Iron Duck Option Spread Strategy class is this coming Tuesday, October 8th at 4 p.m. Central. If you haven't registered, uh, make sure you go to navigationtrading.com slash iron duck registration. If you already registered for part one, you're registered for all three. So you don't have to re-register, but just make sure you are here on this date, October 8th, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Here's a couple, couple points that we'll talk about. One, we're going to talk about how to trade this strategy around stocks earnings announcement. Uh, today, like I said, is October 4th. And so earnings season is getting ready to kick in to full effect starting uh, starting this week. I mean, it's already started. So make sure you do that. We're going to have a watch list uh, for all the stocks and ETFs to trade. Remember, last in the last session, we were primarily just explaining the core concept, the strategy, and, and, and looking at it on uh, the European-style options like SPX and RUT. But now we're going to jump into the individual stocks and ETFs that you can trade. The other thing, um, we're going to talk about some of the variations, including... Uh, a broken wing iron butterfly, which by the way, I, I might end up doing just a full course on this because there's a lot of detail, but I'm at least going to give you uh, as much as you need to start practicing and trading with it. But this is a really awesome strategy uh, that is kind of just a variation of the iron duck. And then Jade Lizard, uh, we'll talk about that as well. And uh, for anyone with, with a pretty small account. You definitely want to make sure you're here because, you know, SPX and RUT can be pretty sizable, you know, if you're trading a small account, but some of these stocks and ETFs that we'll talk about allow you to trade this strategy with literally just two, three, 500 bucks of buying power. So much more uh, scalable from the uh, first small accounts uh, with this part two. So look forward to seeing you then. Uh, let's see what's next. Who got caught being hot this week? Uh, Chris Glenn in the community. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I think Glenn has two ends. So Chris, I apologize. Um, but, uh, thanks for all your contributions. been asking some great questions in the community, which is triggering some great conversations. So congrats, Chris, you got caught being hot. Now onto the alerts. Uh, first alert on Monday, the 30th, we did a closing trade in Ford slash 6B. We were only in, which is the British pound. We were only in this for seven days, booked over 30% of max profit. And so we were out of that trade, re-entered and already got out again this week. So booked two winners in, in 6B in one week. Uh, it's been just a great little trading vehicle. If we look at FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, you can see kind of the implied volatilities up and down, up and down, up and down. That is exactly what we like to see. Goes up, we sell premium, contracts, we book profits. So that's exactly what we've been doing in 6B. Next trade was a closing trade in EWZ. So we closed out our short strangle on EWZ. Uh, booked a nice profit on the trade. We were at 18 days to expiration. So we needed to either roll or close that. And with implied volatility as low as it was in, in EWZ at the time, at 25, uh, we went ahead and just closed that out. Next trade, uh, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we had a short strangle here. We rolled that out from October with 18 days out to November with 46. Kept the strikes ex exactly the same and just extended duration on that spread. So if we take a look at SMH and, and com uh, the contraction in implied volatility is pretty solid over the last couple of days here. Uh, but this is where we're at. We're kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range still. Uh, if, this, if this continues higher, implied volatility stays high, we may look to add another centered strangle around wherever price is at that point. Uh, but for now, we're just playing the wait and see game in SMH. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in Ford slash GC, which is gold. So we had an iron condor on in gold, and then we went ahead and added this one as price was kind of down near the lower end of the range. And so let's take a look at that. Our other, our other uh, iron condor, we ended up taking off later in the week and booking profits in. Uh, but this is where this one is here. Price is sitting right here, fairly well centered, just waiting for some more time to pass on that. 
Next trade, uh, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we rolled one set of our short call verticals from October to November. Extended duration, move those strikes down as the market was moving lower. Uh, we were well over 50% of max profit on that piece. And so we're just continuing to roll these to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. If we look at DIA, in fact, actually, let me come back to that because we had another roll It'll make more sense after I adjust that one. Uh, explain that one. Uh, next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we did our first iron duck in SPX. Did this with seven days to expiration. And so let's take a look at that. Oops, I got some other things checked here. Let's check on the one that we actually have. And that's this one. So price came down after we put this on on Wednesday. Uh, right here, price continued to come down even more and then came down even more. At this point, we were at a point where, uh, where price was right here in our duck head. Uh, and, and now with this, today's rally is just ripped higher. Uh, of course, no upside risk. So we're, we're basically max profit on that, on that, what we call our beak profit, but we're not going to take it off. There's still a decent chance that price could come back down here and we could maximize on that and collect max profit. So just holding on to this, uh, this will be coming off. Let's see, right now we've got how many days to expiration? We've got five. And so uh, I'll, I'll talk about this again on part two of the Iron Duck web class next week, uh, but just playing the waiting game here. Now, if this, if this, if price goes way out here and we've got like a day left, we're just going to close it out because the probability of it coming all the way back into here is very low. But, th but at this point, we still have a, a decent chance. In fact, let me line up the expiration date. You can see the gray represents a one standard deviation move. And so there's still a decent chance that it could come back into that duck head area and collect max profit. So not taking it off quite yet. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we had a long put vertical in XLK, rolled that from October to November and adjusted those strikes as the price continued to move lower. So if we look at XLK, this is what that looks like. Now the price has come up today, so it's moved slightly out of range. So looking for some more downside to get back into range there. Next trade was an opening trade in 6B. So I mentioned this, we uh, we opened up another short strangle in 6B and we were targeting 30 to 50% of max profit. Well, two days later, uh, the uh, implied volatility contracted and we went ahead and booked over 30% of max profit in just two days on that one. So we are completely out of 6B, but if we get a little pop in implied volatility next week, we will look to re-enter. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ES. So this is our long put vertical here that we keep for short delta. Uh, rolled this out. Oh, I'm sorry. We actually stayed in the November cycle. We were already in November with 44 days. So we didn't roll out in time, but we, with the stocks moving lower like they were, we just moved our strikes down from 3080, 3030 down to 2970, 2920. We were well over 50% of max profit. And so we just went ahead and rolled that down. Uh, let's see, push it, uh, put it up on the screen here and you can see price is hanging out right here near our break even. It's come up with the, with the rest of the, with the market today being up 30 points in the S&P. Big, strong day. I really didn't expect it to be this strong, uh, but we're just waiting for uh, uh, to go back down to benefit this piece. Speaking of that, um, I mean, this is, this is kind of what I'm looking at. After those last couple of days, big moves down, I was really expecting a little bounce like we had here, but then I was expecting prices to roll back over, but we have continued higher and uh, we added some more short delta in today right here in IWM, which I'll talk about. Uh, but man, I, I just don't see this market ripping back up to hit new highs. I really think we roll back over next week. I've obviously been wrong many times. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but that is my thesis in the next week. I think, we, I think we're in for some more downside. Um, okay, next trade here, uh, rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ZB in the bonds. So we we're down to 22 days to expiration in the bonds and there's very little value left in the put side. So we wanted to roll our puts up and at the same time, with just 22 days, we went ahead and rolled the entire spread out in time. So now we're at the 161 puts, 164 calls. 
And uh, so let's take a look at ZB. Uh, bonds have been on a little mini tear to the upside as of late. And so if we take a look at the Analyze tab, you can see here's where we're at, just kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range right here. And so we're just playing the wait and see game. Obviously, if price moves back down to center in good shape, if it moves higher, we will look to add potentially another center to strangle around that, uh, but just waiting for now. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in gold. I already mentioned that. So that was our other iron condor that we uh, closed out of, booked over 35% of max profit on that piece. Rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So very similar to... Uh, uh, to what was that one? Very similar to ES uh, in DIA. We we're in November with 43 days, so we didn't want to roll this out in time, but we we're well over 50% of max profit. So we just went ahead and rolled our strikes closer. So let's go to DIA and I'll show you both of those pieces that we have now. We've got two different uh, sets of short call verticals. This one has three contracts. You can see price is just outside of the range there. That's the one that we that we rolled down. And then we've got another one uh, with four contracts. You can still you can see we've got some profit on that piece, uh, but just holding that for some more potential downside. Next trade, closing trade in 6B. So that's the one I already mentioned. Closed out of here, booked over 30% of max profit in just two days on that one. Nice trade there. And then lastly, we did an opening trade in IWM today where we were just adding some short delta. Got a couple questions in the community about this today, so I want to make sure I address those for everybody, anybody else who's kind of thinking the same thing. Uh, one question was, why are we bearish in IWM? Uh, the answer is, it's not necessarily, we're not picking on IWM necessarily. It's just, it's a broad market ETF. And, you know, we're getting this little bounce today. So like I said, we are anticipating that stocks roll back over next week. If that happens, IWM is going to go with it. And so uh, we're just looking for, I, I like to do, I like to add short delta with broad market ETFs. The other thing is we've already got positions in SPX, in SPY, XLK, uh, ES, uh, QQQ, you know, so we, DIA. So we've already got positions in those. So this was just a situation of, okay, what do we not have a position on and what's kind of a broad market ETF uh, that would be a good option to, uh, to get some short delta in, and that's why we chose IWM. Uh, the other question was, why did we choose the strikes we chose? Uh, if we look at the trade tab, for example, um, you know, we, we look at, okay, we're pretty far deep in the money with our 155s right here. Uh, you know, we're at the 77 delta at this point, and then only two strikes out of the money here. Question was, you know, sometimes sometimes we just do, you know, a couple in and a couple out. Uh, here, A, I wanted, to, I wanted to get my strikes a little bit wider to use a little bit more capital, get a little bit more short delta involved. Uh, so that's one thing. You, you don't have to go that wide. So if your portfolio is smaller or you wanted to just be more narrow in your width of wings, you didn't necessarily have to go uh, uh, what is that? Seven wide, like we did. Uh, but that's what that's we were just playing around with the strikes, and that's what we ended up uh, going with. And then the other thing is, why why do we go so deep in the money here? And the reason is, is basically I was just looking to try to get right at about sixty percent probability of profit. Now it's come down slightly since I put this on, but it was right at sixty when I put it on. So we got about a sixty percent probability that it'll expire uh, in our in our favor. And that's just that's, that's just a preference. You know, you could do it with a higher probability of success. You could do it with a lower probability of success. I just like to put these on with about a 60% pop. So that's what we did in IWM. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with oil. Oil got beat down earlier, but it's starting to come back into range. We we're pretty close to a point of, of needing to uh, roll down our calls here. But if we look at our calls... Still got a decent amount of premium in those, so not necessarily ready to roll those down yet. And we've got a decent amount of time left, still 42 days. And so we're just playing the waiting game. So if we get a bounce back up in oil, we'll be in good shape. If not, we will make necessary adjustments. I mentioned ES, I mentioned gold. We've got that iron condor in gold. 
Natty Gas has bounced uh, for us to the upside in our favor a little bit. It's coming all the way down here. Got a couple of nice bounces yesterday and today in that gas to help bring us back into range. Uh, but we're just playing the waiting game here. We've got 24 days to expiration. So we'll start rolling these out to the next cycle uh, early next week. So we'll do one probably on Monday or Tuesday, and then we'll wait a couple days, let price kind of move around, let things uh, let things move, and then we'll, we'll roll the other one out as well. ZB, I mentioned that one. ZW, we've got an iron condor in wheat. Price is dead centered. Got some profit, just waiting for some more before we do anything on that. Apple, big move today, and Apple almost 3% higher moved out of our range. So just holding that uh, for that short delta exposure. Hopefully that comes back down into range next week. Uh, DE, John Deere, up again with the rest of the market. Hanging out right here near our break even. Uh, so just waiting for some more downside to benefit that trade. I mentioned DIA. Goldman Sachs, we are close to actually closing or rolling this one. Uh, price was about up here a couple days ago. We didn't get filled to come back. Uh, price moved back higher, so we're pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, but it is good still to have that short delta exposure. Speaking of uh, short delta, after we put on that IWM piece today, we're we're not quite two to one on our ratio, so we like to we like to keep a short bias in our overall portfolio to help protect us from those downside moves, those vicious downside moves. And so we uh, that that's what we did in IWM, and that's also what we have on in Goldman Sachs here. And so. Um, our, our ratio right now is about two to one. So our short delta, which is beta weighted to SPY, uh, is about two to one versus our overall theta in our portfolio. So that's real, that, that's nice. That's where we want to be, uh, especially if we have an assumption that we think stocks are going lower, which I do. Uh, but we'd like to keep short delta anyway, just for those unexpected uh, down moves. I mentioned IWM, IYR, the real estate ETF. Price is hunkered down right here in the middle. Just waiting for some more theta to decay. KRE, I was a little disappointed in this one. I didn't get filled uh, a few days ago. Price was up here, but it was it was border. It wasn't. It was almost thirty percent of max profit. I had an order to get filled to book thirty percent of max profit. Never hit, and then price ran down on me. Uh, so that's where we sit right now. Still got some profit, and if things continue higher, we'll go ahead and book that. Then we've got this other piece, which is an adjusted strangle, uh, which has got some some profit here since we rolled it, and just waiting on that one as well. QQQ, we've got two different sets of short call verticals. This is one here. Price is hanging out right near where we put it on. And then the other piece here has got some profit, but just holding for some potential more downside. SMH I mentioned, SPX I mentioned, SPY, we've got an iron condor, which is pretty well dead centered here, waiting for some more profit before we do anything with that one. And then lastly, XLK, I already mentioned that, price just outside of our range. Uh, this is a long put vertical that we're also hold, holding for that, uh, that short delta exposure. So that is it. That's the, all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Don't forget, Tuesday, October 8th, 4 p.m., Iron Duck, part two. Let's do it. See you then.